Let's get some reaction to that big development. Joining us now, Mary Scott Greenwood, she's the CEO of the Canadian American Business Council. Scotty, always nice to see you. Um, I guess everyone was wondering what happened. It was a month ago that this became a big story initially. Uh, was it fear of retaliation from Canada or is it the U.S. election cycle? Why did the U.S. reverse course? Well, John, it's good to be with you, too. Uh, a couple of reasons, I think. I think it's a little both of what you said. So I don't think the president of the United States wanted to contradict um, his signature legislative achievement of his first term, uh, the USMCA, the new trade deal with Canada and Mexico, by having Canadian retaliation uh, come in in key states, uh, you know, just 40-something days before the before his re-election campaign. So he didn't want to risk uh, voters scratching their heads about that. The, the second part, John, is uh, the economy is so frail with the pandemic right now, the, the tariffs that the U.S. levied against Canada make it more expensive to manufacture here in the United States, and that was also having an impact. It's, it's interesting. Um, do you think then we are going to hear a lot more? We're just starting to hear um, campaign, real campaign trail comments from the president. I mean, he did, he did sort of that town hall thing with ABC last night. Do you think he's going to be talking about the trade deal, can he point to that in these next few weeks as, as an accomplishment that voters might, that might resonate with voters? Well, I think absolutely. I think what the president will say is he campaigned four years ago on this idea that NAFTA wasn't a good deal for the United States, that a bunch of these trade agreements were bad for the United States, and that he got a better deal. And the truth is, um, as much as the rhetoric uh, is sort of hard to hear, uh, the new trade agreement is marginally better for the United States. So he, it's a promise made, promise kept kind of campaign uh, slogan. And in this case, I think he will uh, rely on that among other campaign promises. All right, now, um, how would you uh, rate how Canada has navigated this file? I mean, I think very quickly we are seeing a lot of kudos given to the Liberal government. Um, how much of that is just, to your earlier point, how the president feels about what uh, resonates with voters right now versus actually how Canada navigated through this, uh, this situation? I think Canada did a phenomenally good job, and uh, the Liberal government definitely gets credit for this, but so too the provinces and so too the opposition uh, parties. Because at the time that NAFTA was being renegotiated, I think you and I talked about this at the time, Canada viewed this, the government officials viewed it, regardless of party, uh, regardless of jurisdiction, mayors, premiers, uh, and federal elected officials as an existential threat to Canada's economy. And so they treated it accordingly. And with the leadership of, uh, of, of the Trudeau government, Minister Freeland, and, you know, the, the famous war room that Brian Clow ran, uh, you saw a whole of Canada effort. And it wasn't just Washington. It was also into uh, key states and uh, with key players throughout the United States. And that, for sure, is bearing fruit. And that's the kind of effort, John, that is going to have to be sustained going forward, whether it's a reelected uh, President Trump or it's a, a newly elected Joe Biden. You know, there's an awful lot of Buy America in the Joe Biden platform that is something that uh, we'll have to look at should, uh, should the election go that way. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up, Scotty, because I've been talking a lot about that. I'm hearing that from a lot of my sources here in Canada, that when it comes to the strategy for the government, that general view that America first um, resonates with voters means this is an issue we will be watching, whether it's Biden or Trump in the White House. And I think that that kind of aligns with what we heard from Chrystia Freeland yesterday. I mean, the reason she's saying we're at the ready is because they're going to have to keep that new USMCA document pretty close. Um, anytime any of these issues continue to pop up over the next few months or certainly over the next few years. That's right. You, in a Biden administration, you wouldn't see uh, tariffs levied the way the president, the, the way Trump uses them as kind of a as kind of a threat or a hammer. But I think you will see, or we know you would see, um, this tendency towards reshoring. And the challenge for, for will be um, when you think about Buy America or you think about reshoring into America. Do you mean North America or just the United States? And so that's a tendency, by the way, that is not just unique to the United States, but it's something um, that we're seeing around the world in the wake of the pandemic. And it's something that Canada and the United States have to work on together in our judgment. 
Okay, just to talk about literally Canada and the U.S. and the border that we do share, Scotty, uh, CTV sources yesterday saying likely to continue to keep that border closed um, uh, past the U.S. election. Um, what do you hear about that? I mean, sort of what's the dialogue taking place between the U.S. and Canada? On the one hand, there are obviously big concerns about the number of COVID cases in the United States. On the other hand, if we really want to see an economic rebound in this country, it's hard to ignore the, the influence that the U.S. has on the Canadian economy. That's exactly right, John. We can't normalize border closure forever. The Canada-U.S. border, um, thankfully, has remained basically open for commerce, for goods, um, but, but the people travel is not open not easy. And even for those um, that are traveling for business and essential business, it's still not um, a guaranteed process to get through. So so the answer will be um, a safe, phased reopening um, where you have testing involved, where you can, you know, essentially have a double negative test. You test in the U.S. before you go. You test in Canada when you land. If you get negative both times, then you wouldn't have to quarantine. Something like that is going to have to happen. The other thing we're going to see, John, is the Canadian snowbirds. I talked yesterday to Glenn Williamson, who's at the Canada Arizona Business Council. Uh, and, you know, there are an awful lot of Canadians that go to Phoenix uh, for the winter uh, and have property down there. Uh, sa same is true in Florida and in South Carolina. So we're going to have to figure out a way for people to um, resume in a safe way, uh, resume their normal activities and go back and forth to do business, to visit family, to go to their property, uh, whatever the case may be. That's going to be very important. No doubt. Hey, Scotty, thanks a lot. Really appreciate your time as always. Good to be with you, John. Thanks for having That's, me. Uh, Mary's, yeah, Mary Scott Greenwood, CEO of the Canadian American Business Council, joining us.